Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 99. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation. Do you have a product or service that you would like to share with the 100,000 plus unique downloads Entrepreneur on Fire generates every month consisting of passionate entrepreneurs? Chris Brogan sponsored an episode for his book, The Impact Equation, with great results. If you would like to have 15 seconds at the top of Entrepreneur on Fire to share your product or message, go to sponsoreofire.com to find out more. Okay, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Eric Schoenberg. Eric, are you prepared to ignite? <laughs> yes, but like not right here in the office uh, until I get the fire extinguisher ready. <laughs> I love that. Eric has been an editor and writer in the business and financial fields for more than 20 years. He is currently the editor-in-chief for Inc. Magazine and has also worked on Wall Street for Goldman Sachs. Given Fire Nation a little overview, Eric, but why don't you take a minute, tell us about you personally, we want to get to know you, and then take another minute and tell us about what you have going on right now. Okay. Uh, well, I'm a Midwestern boy uh, who went to the big city to find fame and fortune and uh, instead ended up as a journalist. But that <laughs> was that was a, turned out to be a propitious move for me, or at least felicitous move for me, because it, uh, it's a career that I've loved and you get to work with. Uh, the most interesting people, you get to interview powerful people, you get to be in the middle of stories as they happen and feel like you are living in the history that's happening around you. That is a great job about journalism. The other thing is that you are constantly learning. It's like being paid to go to school. Uh, at After working at a number of titles, at most of which were owned by Time Inc., I uh, have worked since then at uh, uh, Goldman Sachs, as you mentioned, at CBS, and um, and now I'm at Mansueto Ventures, title called Inc., which is the oldest and I believe most respected title that serves entrepreneurs. It's been doing it for 30 years. Uh, I discovered the field of covering entrepreneurs and wondered uh, where I've been all these years. This is the most exciting field in business journalism, I'm convinced, and not just because entrepreneurship is hot right now, but just because the people who become entrepreneurs – uh, the things they do, the optimism they have, the potential in their businesses is absolutely unlike anything else I've ever seen. Well, I am just so glad that you have found your passionate topic to just delve into because I can tell you that I'm an Inc. follower. I have been for a long time. In fact, I've gotten so many guests for Entrepreneur on Fire of the 130 plus that we've had from the very pages of Inc. because you guys just bring out the best entrepreneurs, the best stories, and every magazine is a page turner. But before we continue, Eric, I'm kind of curious, whereabouts in the Midwest? Cincinnati. Okay, because, you know, I have a little Midwest in me as well. I was in the Army for eight years, four years active, four years in the reserves, and I was stationed at Fort Riley, Kansas for three wow. years. So uh -huh. I, I really know what it's like to live in the Midwest, I have to admit. <laughs> yes, Yes, Kansas will give it uh, give it to you. That's a uh, that's Midwest. That's right, the middle of the country. Too. <laughs> yeah, the next town over is literally where they filmed The Wizard of Oz. Wow, that's great. So, Eric, let's launch into our first real topic, which is the success quote. Because at Entrepreneur on Fire, we love getting that motivational ball rolling with our guest's favorite success quote. And you're our spotlighted guest today, Eric. So, what do you have for us? Um, I have advice that my father gave me. We were at a at a party surrounded by um, uh, other journalists and, um, uh, and, and many other people who are not journalists, actually. And he said to me, uh, my father is a salesman, and he said, there is not a single person in this room who would tell me how to sell machine tools to the machine tool industry. But everybody in this room thinks they can tell you how to do your job better. It was his way of saying you've got to follow your own beliefs and – not be sidetracked by all the kibitzers on the other side who aren't as involved in it as you are. So having faith in yourself, that's good advice for any, any person in business, particularly for an entrepreneur. 
Man, that is going to resonate incredibly well with Fire Nation. Thank you for sharing that, Eric. And let's take that one step down to the ground level. Share with us how you've actually applied that mentality to your everyday life. A lot of what I do as an editor is a judgment call. And uh, I have to, and often people disagree with me, but in the end, after taking advice from uh, all the trusted people on my staff, someone has to decide. And uh, when I feel like I'm right, and um, even if it sometimes disagrees with the other people, I realize that, well, my boss hired me because he wants it my way. And so we will, someone has to decide, we'll have to do it my way. Great insights. And that's a perfect lead in, Eric, to our next topic, which is failure, which are challenges and obstacles that every entrepreneur faces at some point in their journey. And every entrepreneur that you've ever highlighted in Inc. Magazine has faced failure after challenge after obstacle. And it's really how they overcome that that really defines them as entrepreneurs, as people. Can you take us back, Eric, to a point in your journey when you failed or when you just came up against an obstacle that you really had to pivot or just really dig in to work hard to overcome? And then share with us how you did actually overcome that failure, that obstacle. Um, as a, a, a corporate wage slave, I haven't had the kind of spectacular failures that many entrepreneurs go through. And it's one of the reasons that I respect entrepreneurs so much be, is because, as you said, John, everyone in that field has gone gone through some rough patches and managed to get to the other side. Um, for me though, the, the worst point in my career for, for sure was uh, when I was fired from Money Magazine where I was the editor-in-chief. Yeah. Now this happens in every editor's career. I remember when I was taking a class at NYU about entrepreneurship, the teacher came in, uh, I'm sorry, about editing. Uh, the teacher came in one day and wrote one word on the blackboard. Uh, they had blackboards in those days. It was <laughs> fired. And she turned around and said to the class, this is going to happen to you one day, and you should be prepared for it. But when it happened to me, I have to say I wasn't prepared for it. I was devastated. Um, it was seemed to me so incredibly public and so shaming. Um, but uh, there were many good things that came from it in the long run. Um, I went from money to CBS Interactive, where I met many people who work with me now, who've come to join me at Inc. Um, I it was my introduction to the internet. I was, uh, you know, a paper and ink luddite up to that point, and so that was an important, uh, crucial, career-enhancing transformation for me. Uh, and and I think too that it gave me, uh, it, you know, it, it had been too easy. Uh, in the corporate life up to that point. And uh, so that was uh, the kind of experience that builds character and empathy for other people. And um, I, you know, I, I can't say that uh, I enjoyed it at the time, but I see the value in having gone through it. And, and in fact, considering the way Time Warner has gone in, since those days in, uh, in my days at Money, I'm I'm glad I went through it. <laughs> right. Well, Eric, thank you for sharing that difficult time in your life. And this is about your journey, your journey as a journalist through the ranks. So just take us down to the ground level and share with us the couple days, the weeks after you were fired and how you did pick yourself up and move along. And what was that next opportunity directly after that? And how did you maximize that? There were a couple things that I realized I had to do once this, uh, once the news was coming down, was first of all, I wanted to control the message. So I, um, I quickly called a couple of flacks that I knew, people who had been uh, public relations people for me at various titles where I'd worked, and I yeah. asked them to help me control the message. And they were very helpful and, uh, and helped me uh, package the message. Um, my uh, the the editor of uh, the the corporate editor of Time Warner allowed me to write my own um, uh, you know the notice of my dismissal huge uh, which was which allowed me to control it pretty well um, I actually didn't write it myself I gave it to one of my friends to write and that was very um, 
uplifting uh, in a way to see what she had to say. I can imagine. And, um, uh, and from there, um, I was able to very quickly get the job at CBS Interactive. Uh, I had, was being recruited by them previously, and uh, I had told them that, uh, well, I would never leave money. It was such a good job. Um, and I felt like uh, I had these wonderful golden handcuffs on me. Um, the minute the word came down from uh, the uh, corporate floor at Time Warner, I called CBS Interactive, told them the handcuffs were off, and uh, was working the next day. Wow. Wow. That's impressive, Eric. Thank you for, for just sharing with us that point in your journey. And let's use that to move into the next topic, which is the other end of the spectrum. Because just like in all of our journeys, we have come across challenges and obstacles. We also have these aha moments of source that just inspire us, that propel us forward, that move us in different directions. Eric, have you had an aha moment at some point in your journey? And if so, how did you turn that moment into a success of sorts? Well, John, this aha moment is very much a writerly moment, and uh, I, I think that some of your listeners will not find this inspiring, but I hope they find it useful in a practical sense. Great. So for me, as a writer, the aha moment was understanding the importance of a topic sentence in a paragraph. Now, you know, I, I don't know whether some of your tech um, entrepreneur subjects have talked about, you know, discovering some particularly elegant form of code. <laughs> this is this is similar, but everyone has to write. Everybody has to write, especially these days, Eric. And you should realize that the best way to make uh, a story that is more than a few paragraphs in length work is to think about the value of the topic sentence. And this has solved so many problems for me as a writer. The first sentence in, in a paragraph should be should state what is coming in the paragraph. It should state kind of what the subject is. Uh, and and it sh that helps you in two ways. One is it helps you formulate your thoughts, helps you develop what's going to come in the paragraph, in the sentences to follow, and the rest of the paragraph to follow. It also helps you decide when you've ended the paragraph ahead of time. And it helps you marshal your thoughts in an orderly way. Um, most people, I think, sit down and try to write in a kind of stream of consciousness way, and what ends up is, um, you know, a lot of uh, people getting into a lot of tangles or wandering off in a lot of blind, down a lot of blind alleys. Um, so, you know, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but one day you will thank me for reminding you of the importance of the topic sense. Eric, that's why I was so excited to have you on the show because I knew you were going to bring a unique spin, a unique flavor to Entrepreneur on Fire because you're coming at things from a different angle and you couldn't be more right. Topic sentences, writing in general is so important to anybody starting a business these days for so many reasons. So thank you for sharing that with us. And let's use that to move into my next question. Have you had an I've made it moment? Yes, I had a I've made it moment when I was uh, made the editor in chief of Money Magazine. Yeah. Now, man, many of your viewers are entrepreneurs for whom that kind of realization of a long time aspiration within an organization may be something that they would consider more of a you know a prison sentence than a <laughs> than an affirmation. But for me, you know, I had worked at uh, Money Magazine for a long time. It's where I had gotten started in journalism. It's where I had won most of my journalism awards to that point, and to be made the editor-in-chief and become like the people I had worked for was, I thought, uh, a moment of uh, almost uh, once unimaginable success. Um, I think that uh, one of the things you realize about aha moments, or I've made it moments rather, of that kind is that they can be traps, and they can lead you to... Um, overconfidence, um, that you learn a lot more from the challenges and the failures than you do from the I've made it moments. And uh, so while it was reaffirming, and I'm, you know, would, I, I'm still proud of having gotten that far in my career at Money, um, it was certainly not the end of the journey, and it was 
it was a high point, uh, and I should have had the good sense to realize that it was going to be followed by some valleys as well. That is all about the journey, the highs, the lows, the roller coaster rides. And Eric, I'm just really glad that you put it the way that you did because it's so important to have these I've made it moments or at least just these appreciations of these milestones that we're all hitting along our journeys. And I love this question for a number of reasons because every interviewee just answers it differently. Some say, John, I have I've made it moments every single day. Others say, John, I will never have an I've made a moment. That will denote the end of my journey Mm -hmm. and my journey will never be over. To me, it's somewhere in the middle. You need to be setting these great goals and when you do accomplish them or when you hit these milestones in life, you need to appreciate them for what they are because it is all about the journey. And Eric, do you feel that you are enjoying your journey? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, the journey is, is the key. That's wonderful stuff. And let's use that to move into right now, the present moment, Eric. You have a lot of great things going on as the editor-in-chief of Inc. Can you pull out one thing that's just really exciting you right now? The thing that's exciting me most is the subject matter. Uh, like I said earlier, John, this discovering entrepreneurship as a, as a journalistic beat was, uh, well, it was an aha moment unto itself. I just felt like, where have you been all my life? Yes. Um, every entrepreneur has an amazing story. The people who start companies um, are the heroes of American business, in, in my opinion. They are the most optimistic tribe of people on earth, let alone in business. Um, And every one of them has the potential to change the world for the better. Every one of them sees the world um, and wants to make it better. That is such a kind of extraordinary and, uh, you know, impossible, immeasurably valuable contribution. on top of that, from my point of view as a, as a journalist, um, entrepreneurs are eager to talk. Um, they're not shielded usually by a phalanx of uh, PR people who are trying to get them to say only the most boring pablum. <laughs> um, a lot of them are, uh, in fact, I would say most of them are uh, deeply interested in helping other entrepreneurs along their path because they recognize the um, that it's not an easy path. And um, all of that makes them wonderful subjects. Um, there's, there's drama and emotion in their lives and um, a willingness to be visible to the public. And I, and I feel like um, by retelling their stories to an audience of other entrepreneurs, exactly what you do in your podcast is a really great calling. I couldn't agree with you more, Eric. I mean, the passion and the inspiration that these entrepreneurs foment at every angle and every twist and turn of their journey is just really exciting to behold. And I just start every interview with a certain level of excitement and just end on a whole different level. And that is the mission of Entrepreneur on Fire is to share these journeys, is to be the medium and a platform for these entrepreneurs that are doing so many great things. And I'm holding your most recent magazine right now in my hands, and one thing that just jumps out is in a big black circle, you have the 100 biggest job creators in America, which is something that you were just alluding to earlier. I really just wanted to ask you, Eric, why do you feel like this is an important topic to focus on at Inc.? One of the things that entrepreneurs do for the economy, in addition to um, you know creating new products and innovating and showing big business how to do things uh, in a better way, is that they create jobs. They are famously responsible for almost all the job creation that's occurred over the past 20 years. They are, you know, roundly praised for that. But up until this point, nobody has singled out the individual entrepreneurs who are out there creating jobs. Right. At Inc., we have a large database of fast-growing, successful private companies. And um, there was no reason not to replicate that, not for growth, which we already do with the Inc. 500, but for job creation. And so it seemed like there was this vacuum of recognition for people who were contributing in that way. And, um, and that's what we filled with the Higher Power Awards. Now, as it turned out, the Higher Power Awards succeeded 
beyond our wildest dreams. The event which um, honored them in Washington two weeks ago was filled to capacity. Uh, in fact, we had to turn people away who had come uh, to accept their awards or wanted to come to accept their awards. And uh, 80% of the people who showed up were not local to the Washington market. So people came a long way to accept this recognition. Um, the press that we received for the Higher Power Awards showed that, in my opinion, this is an idea uh, whose time has come. So, Eric, on that note, what is your vision for the future of you, Eric? Me, Eric, I'm going to preside over the growth of Inc. as a brand um, into a wide variety of things that it doesn't necessarily do right now or at least isn't known for. Right. It's... It's known as a magazine, deservedly so. It was the first publication of any kind to really recognize the important contribution of entrepreneurs and to serve needs that they have that are unique from uh, the, you know, the corporate stewards who are the heroes of, of traditional business magazines like Fortune and Forbes. Uh, but, but it's not enough to be simply uh, a magazine. Um, Inc. is also a digital platform for serving inspiring and instructive uh, and practical information to entrepreneurs. Um, it uh, needs to be on more than just the web. It needs to be much more active in mobile, on mobile platforms. And uh, uh, it, it uh, needs to expand its presence, live presence too, because that's the best way to teach people, the most memorable way to teach people is face-to-face. -face. And um, I think Inc. has a, a a lot to deliver there. The journalists I work with are extremely knowledgeable, extremely empathetic, and um, have a power to bring together entrepreneurs who also have a message to deliver to other entrepreneurs. And so we ought to do that every way we can, in print, in digital formats, uh, and in person. Well, I think that your vision for the future is spot on, especially in the mobile field, because that is just an incredible opportunity for companies to jump onto early because it's just crazy to see the numbers of people that are now utilizing their smartphones, their tablets solely for internet browsing. And if Inc. can come out and be the leader in that platform for these online publications, it's just going to continue to be on the cutting edge. So that's exciting stuff, Eric. I'm extremely glad that you have that vision for the future. And that's a perfect lead into our last topic, which is the lightning rounds. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions, Eric, and you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Does that sound like a plan? Oh, amazing and mind-blowing answers are my specialty. <laughs> uh, you've been lining them up so far, Eric, so let's just keep it rolling. What was holding you back in your journey? Uh, it was um, trying to do too much at once. Uh, I'm reminded of the advice that Ev Williams gives to people, the, the co-founder of Twitter gives to people when he uh, talks to young entrepreneurs. It is always do fewer things. Focus uh, on what you can accomplish, get something done, uh, and that will be far more effective than kind of doing in a superficial and, and unsatisfying way a whole bunch of things. Could not agree more. And Fire Nation is very used to the word focus because... I love that word. It is my acronym of choice. I have it pasted over my computer every day to look at because focus means follow one course until success. Huh. Good, good. I like it. Eric, what is the best business advice that you ever received? I've received it from two different entrepreneurs, uh, Phil Libin of Evernote and uh, from uh, Danny Meyer of um, uh, United Union Square Hospitality Group, so the, the founder of Shake Shack and Union, uh, Union Square Cafe. So the, the, uh, the advice is basically be authentic. Libin tells a story about how he was enamored of magic when he was a boy. And, uh, well, it, it actually until he was a young man. And he realized as he got into business that some of the things he'd learned uh, studying magic would be useful in various business situations. For example, there's this one technique that magicians have called, um, uh, it's called false choice, I guess would be the best way to describe it. And you, you give the person that you're doing the magic trick for the impression that they're making a decision when in fact you're making it. So he would go into um, 
uh, presentations for his company where he would be trying to get VCs and uh, investors to let him present first the story of his product and only secondly, after they are all pumped up about the product, to get onto the business story behind it. The business story was weaker, so we always wanted to do the product part first, but whenever he would do the presentation this way, the VCs would want to jump ahead to the business section, which spoiled the whole thing for him. So he gave them a false choice. He said, um, well, there are two parts of this presentation. There's the product side and there's the business side. Which would you want to do first? If they said they'd want to rather do the business side first, he would say, good, I'll save that for last. And if they said, I want to do the product side first, he'd say, okay, let's start with that. <laughs> um, but he realized that that, while it was effective, wasn't really what he wanted to do. That what he wanted to do was not trick people. That in the end, he didn't feel very good about dealing with other people in business by manipulating them. Danny Meyer said the same thing about the reason for his success at Union Square. It's just authenticity. Be what you are. Level with the people you do business with. You'll build more durable relationships. You won't have to – you'll save energy because you won't have to create a persona every time you do something. You'll just be yourself. Powerful. Eric, what do you regret doing or not doing at some point in your journey, and what lesson did you learn from that? The thing I regret most is not uh, is the moments when I was too busy or too self-important or too busy trying to look self-important that I didn't stop to thank the people I was working with. Um, entrepreneurs are very much a self-motivated and driven group of people, but every entrepreneur I've ever talked to would acknowledge that they didn't do it themselves. They had a lot of help from the talent around them, and they had a lot of help from mentors. And I think it's extremely important to acknowledge all those people. And my biggest regret is that I didn't do that adequately. Well, Eric, you are doing so now by taking time and sharing your story, your beliefs, your experience with Fire Nation. So we thank you for that. My pleasure, John. Eric, if you could only choose two websites to obtain all the information that you needed to succeed, what would they be and why? Inc.com would be one of them. Yes. <laughs> without, a, without a doubt. And then I, uh, I have a, a couple other websites that I follow religiously. Um, one is uh, Both Sides of the Table by Mark Suster. And uh, the, the entrepreneur turned VC he has an incredible take on, on entrepreneurship, and I recommend him highly to... Um, any of your members, and if you could uh, have your members tweet him and tell him to join Inc., I would be delighted if you would do that. If there's, a, if there's any other website that I think is uh, really important is, uh, or, or a web application is Evernote. Um, yes. Working with Phil Libin, uh, who I think is a brilliant man. I've just found that Evernote is a, um, just incredibly flexible, always astounds me with the things it can help you do. I have talked to so many entrepreneurs about resources, about websites that they love, and Evernote is such a consistent theme and for all the right reasons. So thank you for just acknowledging that as well. So Eric, if you could recommend one book for Fire Nation, what would it be? Uh, it would be Dan Kahneman's book, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow, or it might be called Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow. Kahneman is a Nobel Prize winning economist who blends psychology and economics. His book makes the point that there are, this is an analogy, uh, is he is uh, first to admit, but that there are two ways of thinking. There's the fast way in which you use a lot of mental shortcuts, uh, and then there's the slow way in which you stop and deliberate and consider all possibilities. 90% yeah. of our day is spent with the, uh, with the fast thinking, where we do mental shortcuts or fall back into patterns or um, don't stop to examine things that are sort of elementary if you were to stop and think about them. Um, it's a reminder that things that we hold to be self-evident are maybe not really true, but are products of mental shortcuts that we've created. Wonderful. Well, we will link that up in the show notes for sure. So Eric, this is the last question. It's my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest that, digest it, and then come back at us with an answer. 
Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have. Your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? I would call the great writers and entrepreneurs that I know um, and invite them to do long stories uh, about their journey um, that, you know, since, since uh, you stipulated that I don't have to worry about how I'm going to eat and uh, Correct. shelter myself. So I'd like to do beautifully written long stories um, where I don't have to I don't have to worry about selling advertising. I don't have to necessarily worry about the traffic to this website, but I can do stuff that is really satisfying, deeply knowledgeable, um, brutally honest, um, and is given the space it needs to be a really satisfying read. Um, and then if I could somehow in this, in this fantasy world that we're created, creating, give people the time to enjoy that kind of writing, um, I would. And then I think I would die happy. Wow. Well, with that clean slate that you were given, Eric, you are truly doing some incredible things. Thank you for giving us that actionable advice. And thank you for giving us actionable advice this entire interview. We are all better for it. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance. Then tell us exactly how we can find Inc. or the best ways to just subscribe and to be a part of the Inc. community. And then we'll say goodbye. I would say Two things. One, as I re repeat that earlier advice uh, about being authentic, that the truest measure of what's right and true in your own life, your journey as an entrepreneur, um, your journey as a leader of people as a, at, at your company is, is inside your own head and your own heart if you listen to it. Um, do not allow yourself to um, uh, make decisions based on what you think other people want you to do. All the bad decisions I've made in my life have been because I was trying to answer a question of what do I think people want me to do in this situation. The best decisions have always been about not what do I want to do, but what's the right thing for me to do according to my own lights. So that's that piece of advice. The other thing, one piece of advice that I would give any leader um, at a company, and I know that entrepreneurs are particularly susceptible to um, not letting go. As yes. Rose and they and you know they built this baby and they want to have their hands in it and they strongly suspect that they can do anything better than anyone else at the company and that can be an impediment to growth because it doesn't um, it doesn't allow the people that you depend on that you need at this stage in your company to excel. So I would say remember that as a leader in a company, your job is to create great jobs not numerous jobs, although that's to be encouraged too. And if you do enough of it, you can be on Inc.'s higher power awards. Create big, great jobs with a lot of responsibility uh, and a lot of um, potential for your people to take pride in working for you. Mm, well said. And what's the best way that Fire Nation can connect with the Inc. community? Easy to remember, Inc.com. Yes. Eric, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, your experience. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. All right, John. A pleasure. Fire Nation, you asked for it, and I created it. My first free ebook, 10 Incredible Insights from 10 Incredible Entrepreneurs, is published. All four pages of it. Simply go to eofire.com and subscribe to my newsletter. You will get immediate access to the top business insights from the likes of Barbara Corcoran, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk, and seven other incredible guests. Prepare to ignite. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.